It has been a long time coming, the Cupra Born. We first saw it as the seat Elborn concept, named after a particularly trendy neighborhood in Barcelona, way back in March 2019. So why the brand change? Well, if the Born had been a seat it would have had to be slightly cheaper than an ID.3, as is the case with the Leon and the equivalent Golf, to attract customers. If you've sat in a lower spec ID.3 and poked around at some of the cheap plastics, though, you'll know that the Volkswagen has already been designed on a budget. It's all to do with battery costs and profit margins being much tighter for the so-called legacy manufacturers switching to EVs. As a Cupra, the VW Group can price the Born slightly higher than an ID.3, charging a little bit more for some sharper design and a touch more sportiness. Apparently, Cupra says it has spent more time and money on refining the styling of the Born. It gets a much angrier face than the L Born and the equivalent ID.3, as well as little flicks on the side skirts, a longer rear spoiler, dramatic 18 to 20 inch wheel options and a slightly chubby looking diffuser, which is exaggerated in the lighter grey exterior colour. Speaking of colour, Cupra describes its palette as sophisticated neutral. From what we've seen on the Formenter and its hot Leons, that means a mix of navy blue, a couple of shades of grey and that all-important copper detailing. Despite all of the extra styling work, though, in the flesh the Born does look remarkably similar to the ID.3. It's the boxy shape, the identical glass, the short overhangs and the similar C-pillar that really give the game away. Whether that's a bad thing will be down to personal preference. Correct. Technically there will be four different iterations of the Born from launch, with the most powerful pair being offered with something Cupra is calling the E-Boost Performance Pack. Tick that box and the rear-mounted electric motor is able to drive the rear wheels with a maximum of 228 brake horsepower for a short amount of time under full throttle, bear in mind the most powerful ID.3 available right now makes 201 brake horsepower, although we're expecting twin motor, 4WD versions of both the VW and the Cupra in the near future. You can combine that e-boost function with a 77 kilowatt hours battery for max range, 335 miles and 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.0 seconds, or with the Born's mid-sized 58 kilowatt hours unit for its quickest 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint, 6.6 seconds and around 260 miles of range. There's a few minor hardware tweaks to try and distance the Born from the ID.3 too, including wider tires and suspension that's 15mm lower on the front axle and 10mm at the rear. You also get the option of the VW Group's Dynamic Chassis Control DCC, no matter what powertrain you pick, and the traction control can be loosened into Escape Sport. Under the two e-boosters is another 58 kilowatt hours battery option, although this time it's paired with a 201 brake horsepower motor that means a couple of extra miles of range. That's expected to be the best seller when the Born arrives on UK shores and is the only spec we've driven to date. Click on through to the driving tab of this review to see what we made of it. There'll also be a base spec version that's likely to start at just over £30,000 after the UK government's plug-in car grant has been applied. That'll pair a 45 kilowatt hours battery with a 148 brake horsepower motor for a total of around 211 miles of range. Not bad dot will be able to properly put the Born up against an ID.3 and other rivals when we know the prices for each spec in the UK, but right now the Spanish contender seems like a very decent first EV from Cupra. That is as long as you aren't expecting an all-electric hot hatch. With a maximum output of 228 brake horsepower and even that only available for 30 seconds at a time, it's by no means a hardcore, performance version of the MEB skateboard setup. Think of it as an ID.3 alternative with a slightly plusher, and more eco-friendly, interior, lots of copper-colored detailing and a pointy snout and you'll be much closer to the mark. We've only had the chance to drive a single version of the Born so far on smooth Spanish roads, but first impressions are good, although you'd need to be a real hot shoe that had just jumped out of an ID.3 to tell much of a difference between the Cupra and its German sibling. They're remarkably similar. To be fair to the Born, we've only tested the mid-spec 201 brake horsepower model with its 58 kilowatt hours battery and without the optional DCC. When lacking its party piece 30 second e-boost to call on it's a long way from a hot hatch, there's no drama to the power delivery and no playfulness in twisty stuff. 
It's certainly not sluggish, 0 to 62 miles per hour only takes 7.3 seconds with this setup and all versions get the same 229 pounds feet of torque, but the brake pedal is spongy, those with e-boost will get bigger brakes, and it's so quiet and composed that it doesn't quite meet Cupra's claims of electrifying performance or an emotional driving experience, not at all. As an everyday hatch the Bourne is right up there. The rear-wheel drive layout and low-mounted battery pack means it turns in sharply, gets a neat little turning circle and limits body roll well. Rather frustrating that you don't get a full one-pedal driving mode, though, even in brake mode there could be more immediate regen. We're yet to test it on UK roads, but when equipped with the larger wheel options that lower suspension doesn't seem to make things too firm. Like in the MK8 Golf, the optional DCC offers 15 different levels of suspension firmness. Crikey. Here's perhaps the biggest difference between the Cupra and its Volkswagen twin. In pictures the two cabins look remarkably similar, and yes the Cupra does get the same minimalist, but an free layout, arg, but the materials used feel much more premium. There are more soft-touch surfaces than scratchy plastics and the funky little 3D patterns are everywhere you look.